engineers choose the comet Temple 1 for a daring mission. They plan to smash a probe into the comet, exposing the inner core. The results of the mission could prove Wickram Singha's theory. This mission will test the engineer's abilities to the limit. The 820-pound payload will have to travel across space to intercept a comet traveling at 10 times the speed of a bullet. After six years of meticulous planning, finally on January 12, 2005, the Delta rocket carrying the deep impact probe launches into space. After a 268,000 mile journey, the impactor, about the size of a school desk, separates from the mothership and hurdles toward the comet. It scores a direct hit. These images from space and Earth-based telescopes show the moment of impact. For the first time, the secrets of what lies inside a comet are exposed. From a lofty perch in space, the Spitzer Infrared Space Telescope analyzes the unique signals given off by the compounds contained in the plume of comet dust. An amazing array of ice and fine dust particles are seen. But to everyone's surprise, the data also shows that the comet contains clay, the same kind of clay that can be found on Earth. And it's thought the only way to make clay is with liquid water. Wickram Singha believes that this is proof that at some point in time, Temple One did have a gooey liquid water interior. With liquid water and organic molecules, comets could be incubators for life. Comets like Temple One could be packed with microorganisms ready to seed life throughout the galaxy. We here on the Earth are connected to a much, much bigger cosmos. Life on the Earth is part of a connected chain of being that extends to the remotest corners of the galaxy, maybe to the remotest corners of the universe. We have our cousins out there. But whether life began inside a comet or on the Earth, what is still completely unknown is how it happened. How non-living organic molecules combined to create the first living thing, this big birth is one of the big unanswered questions in science. The ancients used to believe that life could emerge spontaneously. A frog could emerge from stagnant water or flies from rotten food. In the 19th century, Charles Darwin proposed that perhaps life emerged only once, many millions of years ago. He suggested that this big birth then led to all life today through a process of evolution. Starting with the simplest possible life form, more and more complex creatures evolve. As each new species emerges, it forms a new branch on the tree of life. And working backward in time, we can see our ancestors. Scientists propose that all life on Earth is descended from a single microscopic organism what's known as the last common ancestor. Understanding this ancient microorganism will help scientists uncover the secrets of the Big Birth. But how can you unpick over four billion years of evolution? A good place to start is with fossils. Martin van Kranendonk is a geologist with the good fortune to live in Australia, home to some of the oldest rocks in the world. And among these ancient rocks, van Kranendonk claims to have found fossil remains of an unusual organism that lived three and a half billion years ago. These are our great, 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 great grandfathers and grandmothers. 
These are fossil stromatolites, about 3.5 billion years old. And they were deposited on the shoreline of an ancient ocean. They're the oldest evidence for life on Earth. Stromatolites are rock-like buildups of microbial mats clumped together in the ancient seawater. And they were composed of microbes that colonized the ancient seafloor on top of just wave-rippled sandstone. Their fossilized remains now show that life was already well underway three and a half billion years ago. But what was it like? Well, after billions of years, the sea has changed, but modern stromatolites are still alive today. Von Kranendonk travels 600 miles across the Australian outback here to Shark Bay. These are some of the largest stromatolites in the world and they grow up to about a meter high. The stromatolite domes are formed by communities of microorganisms like bacteria and algae. They bind together with fine sediment to form layer upon layer of rock. Living on the mounds, the microorganisms carry out a process called photosynthesis. Using energy from sunlight, they turn carbon dioxide and water into energy, and in the process, they give off oxygen. But even though stromatolites date back at least three and a half billion years, scientists believe that they are still not the first step in the creation of life. To find that, we have to travel back even further in time. So far, there is no fossil record for this ancient period. But one scientist thinks she can discover what these first forms of life were like. It's a quest that will take her to one of the most remote places on Earth. There are estimated to be three billion separate species of microorganism on Earth, but less than 1% has so far been discovered. Hunting them down is NASA biologist, Dr. Lynn Rothschild. All you have to do is look under a microscope and they are so incredibly cool. When I was eight years old, I looked through a microscope and I, I just fell in love. I realized that they are absolutely at a crucial step to study evolution. And so that's the direction I went with my own research. So I get to have fun and get to study something important. Rothschild is traveling 14,000 feet above sea level to the Altiplano in southern Bolivia. It's a hostile landscape where temperatures regularly drop to minus four degrees Fahrenheit. It also has some of the highest recorded levels of ultraviolet radiation on Earth. But it could be the perfect place to find a close relation of the microbe that gave rise to all life on Earth, the last common ancestor. Coming up into the Bolivian Andes here seems like the last place on Earth we'd go to look for early life. But we found organisms up here that are probably like the earliest organisms on Earth. Hey, maybe we're even going to find ones that are similar to the last common ancestor of all of us. Rothschild scours the Earth, looking for microbes living in extreme conditions. It turns out that these microorganisms, called extremophiles, may be closely related to the most ancient forms of life. You have to really go to unusual environments to find ecosystems that are just microbial. I hope that those organisms prove to be extremely deep branch, in other words, organisms that seem to be much closer to our last common ancestor than you and me. Next stop for Rothschild, is a landscape of boiling mud. Superheated steam, worn by shallow bodies of magma, shoots out of the ground. Hot geysers like this would have been present on early Earth, so Rothschild hopes to find life in these extreme conditions. The earliest common life form that we're all descended from lived in very high temperatures. Rothschild works meticulously logging the exact temperature and position of each sample she takes. A great challenge for scientists trying to understand how life began is that even the most basic microorganisms alive today are still incredibly complex. When looked at on a microscopic scale, the intricate complexity of a cell is clear. 
From its ability to reproduce to the way it converts energy, every process in the cell is carried out by an extraordinary interplay of complex organic molecules. But the ancient microorganisms that Rothschild is tracking down in Bolivia could give us clues to the nature of the first organisms. As the sun dips below the horizon, the temperature plummets. Rothschild takes refuge from the harsh environment where these modern cousins thrive. Overnight, the temperature drops well below zero. Next morning, the vehicle won't start. Dr. Rothschild also feels the effects of the thin air, 14,000 feet above sea level. It's not much fun for us when we drop our oxygen levels just a few percent, but on the early Earth there was no free oxygen whatsoever. So just to time travel back just a little bit is a, is a huge price to pay for us humans. Rothschild's next hunting ground is the Laguna Colorada. Its red color gives a clue about the very unusual type of microbe she hopes to find. This part of Bolivia boasts one of the highest UV counts of anywhere in the world. The thin atmosphere at this high altitude only partially blocks the sun's radiation, making living conditions here closer to those of the Earth four billion years ago. When life first arose, the level was incredibly high vastly higher than we see today. And so by coming up here, even though we're not able to simulate the early Earth, because of course we couldn't live under those conditions, at least we can time 